Okay, so let's take a look at question number nine here. We're, we're looking at a uh, study where we have some data and we're basically trying to find a confidence interval, which is very similar to the other questions um, in questions like six and seven. But we're just given um, the data in a little bit of a different format here and we have to go and pick through parts of it. So the first question here says um, we have a study where we have 200 women, 300 men. So that's going to be our sample sizes. So that's going to be our n variable. Um, and we have a mean here of 84 and a standard deviation of 3.1. Okay, so the mean is the x bar. So that's one of our values and the standard deviation sigma, which is 3.1. And then we have another set of data where we have the mean is 80 and the standard deviation is 2.9. Okay, so we've got some, I'm just write down our values here for n. So we've got some numbers here that are very familiar to what the other questions are. So those are the important things to pick out. And question A says we have a 97% confidence interval um, for the longevity, okay, for both sets of data here. Okay, so we have to figure out what that size of that interval is. Okay, so that's what we're essentially being asked here, the size of the interval. All right, so 97% from our, uh, the previous questions, we know we have 100% for the curve. So 97% is most of the curve, okay? So that means the error or the alpha value is just going to be equal to 3%, all right? That is the 100% um, of the curve minus 97, all right? So that's, that's one of our, our terms. Then we need to know what our alpha divided by two is, which is 1.5%. That means we're looking at 1.5 on the top end, 1.5 on the lower end. So we can right away calculate our Z score. And from our previous questions, we know the Z score is calculated from the inverse norm function. And we also know it's symmetrical. Um, so what we're really calculating is the Z score of 0 0.015, which is going to give us a Z score of negative 2.1701. But we also know that there's a positive side to that Z score because we're going to be looking at an interval, which is essentially in the um, high side of the curve, which is just 1% left. So that's 98.5%. 5%, which is 0.985. That's going to be our other Z score, which will give us a positive 2.701. Okay, but we didn't really have to calculate that because we know it's symmetrical. So I'll just put that in there for completeness. And then we know what our uh, formulas are, right? So we have two sets of data. We've got women and men. So we're going to have two intervals. Um, so we'll just do one set of data here. First, we have um, we'll put our formula in, which is um, our mean, uh, sample mean minus the Z score of the alpha by, by two times sigma all over the square root of N. Okay, and then that's our population mean is our, inter our interval variable. And then we're gonna expand the range to the upside. So it's just alpha divided by two times sigma all over the square root of N. Okay, and then all we have to do is plug in the values for that given population. So for the women, it is the low, the mean here is 84. The Z score, Z score is going to be the same because it's, uh, it's standardized over the curve. We're looking at a 97% interval for both sets of these data. So we're just gonna use 2.1701 times, um, Standard deviation is 3.1, and the sample size here was 200, okay? And then we do the same for the other side. We're just going to, instead of subtract, we're going to add the value, and it's the same calculation. All right, and then that will generate our interval, and if you work it all down on your calculator, um, you should get around 83.52. 
population mean and 84.48. That means within a 97% confidence interval, we can say that these are the ages. Um, so this is longevity, so that women live with a 97% con confidence interval to at least 83 and up to 84 and a half. All right, and then we can do the same for the men calculation. You're just going to have a different standard deviation, uh, which is I believe 2.9. The mean is slightly lower, which is 80. And um, the sample size, I think, was different here. It was 300. So you can do the same calculation for that. And then in part B of the question, what they end up doing is they talk about changing, if the study involved three times as many individuals as the original study, find the new confidence interval. So if they're just saying three times as many individuals. So that means you just multiply by three. That's going to give us our new value for n, a new n value. Okay, so instead of having... Um, uh, let's see, what is it? 200 for the women. So let's, we can do that part here for B here. So this is the women with uh, three times the sample size. Okay, so that is going to give us 600 here. All right, so the next thing we can do is we're going to do the exact same calculation. Um, but our n value is just going to increase to 600. And then we'll see what kind of change happens in our, in our interval. So this is going to be here 84 minus 2.1701 times 3.1. But we're going to use the square root of 200 times 3, which is 600. That just means there's more people being sampled. And then we're going to add that same interval back. Okay, which is 600. All right, so now if we, we're gonna get a slightly different range of values here. So this one now is gonna give us 83.73 and the population mean around 84.27. So if we have a bigger sample size, it looks like our range actually narrowed, which just tells us that we can be more accurate about what the true mean of the longevity is for, uh, for this particular population, all right? So if we increase that to say um, 6,000 times by 10, we would get even a, a, a more defined range. So we get essentially a more accurate value. So one of the trends, I believe, in the question in part C, it says, what, is, what happens to the interval as n changes? Well, you can see is that the higher the sample size, the more um, close the interval is, which means we are getting to have a higher and higher um, or a smaller interval for that particular confidence level. Okay, so we can be 97% confident with a smaller level if we use a larger sample size versus a smaller sample size. All right, so that's how that question goes. It's not really too much uh, different. Um, you just have to calculate, you can calculate the, the interval for the other set of data. Um, you'll just get a different set of numbers and, um, and you can also see how they change. Okay, so that's how that question goes.